Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, hanging out with the colleagues today. I'm Nate. I'm Dave. Ryan. And uh, today we're going to bring bring you uh, another Mage Forge. And you know this is where we usually just uh, create a magic item for you to add to your 5th edition game. And my concept for this is a universal focus. Every spellcasting class has got, you know, some little doodad trinket, something or other, that they can use as a focus. Well, what happens if there would be a magic item that could be used by any class, but then beyond that had some other kind of special ability? So, first of all, there is precedent for this magic item. Staff of the Magi, Staff of Power, um, what is it, Rod of the Oath Keeper? Hmm. Is the the warlock one? Yeah, Tactic. well, that that yeah, that one is, but that one solely can only be used by warlock. No, no, I know the other okay. ones are pretty specific as well. Okay. Right. I'm just pointing out that there's several magic items that are technically arcane Focus. that are focused. Focus is, at, yeah, okay. So, so there's precedent, and the reason why I bring it up is because uh, that means so. So, first of all, this this is a magic item can, that can have a plus one, two, or three. And that bonus is actually going to be a bonus to hit with spells that require to your to your spell attack roll, mm. and it increases the DC by that number by, as well. by that number as well. Right. So right right there, it, it requires attunement, mm -hmm. and it's already a decent thing because it makes you a more powerful spellcaster, mm -hmm. and you do not have to use your components now. Correct. Does that is that just good enough? Like that's that's pretty good because like Rod of the Oathkeeper, what else does that do? Uh, it lets you get a spell back okay. once per day. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I don't even think it require. It just so, might require an action. Sounds like equivalent to an arcane recovery in yeah. a way. Yeah, right. it just gives you an extra. But use. getting a warlock, so. you know, spell back is like, oh, look at that. That that's huge. <laughs> and, but, and then if you want to talk, you know, staff of the magi or staff of power, you're getting a lot of stuff. Yeah. And they're they're the three I'm thinking off off the top of my head. Uh -huh. yeah. But that being said, that it can be a focus for any caster class. So I don't think it. It's not like a mutable thing like we've talked about before. It's a set thing that anybody can use. It's any any caster you know can can use it is what I'm looking at. Yeah. So so that being said, you know like what, it, what druids, is it? What does it look like? Yeah, druids have like mistletoe and stuff, and you know the the bard has his instrument. Um, the warlock. You know, can use any of the arcane focuses, which are orbs, rods, staffs, wands. All right, so this is my vote. I'd say it's an orb that you could attach to a staff or something or a rod or whatever. But it's an orb that looks like a miniature world. I was going with crystal. I, I was going to go with something that is not actually a focus for any of the classes. Uh, a circlet. I was thinking a circlet that somebody would just wear or a pendant. A circlet or a pendant. I was thinking like a ring or something. Um, but... You know, I guess any of them, it, it doesn't really matter so much. I I just kind of like the idea of it not being a standard one in any of the standard focuses. Uh, and and I I like that idea as well. I mean, I I had toyed around with the idea of an of an orb, you know, and I'm like, oh, what about you know, what about some kind of crystal that you know that doesn't fit into any of the. Or what if it's a uh, a custom ion stone? That's a crystal, yeah. But yeah, that's not bad. That that's definitely not bad. Are we going to do the float around your head ions then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, why not? As okay. much as I hate it. As much as I hate it, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, and, and uh, you know, maybe it has the property of, maybe it does change a little bit according to what kind of caster you are. Mm -hmm. Just something, you know, may, maybe, so like it's a carved stone or gem, and the way it look is, the, the look is like predetermined by... Uh, what kind of caster you are, like, or, or, the, or it could just be the wielder, like the individual, like it manifests in something that's relevant to the wielder. Well, I was thinking like a bard, maybe it, it manifests itself in like a, a music, music note, a music note, or mm. you know, mm, uh, yeah, well, so like a carved music note. Yeah, or mm. like a warlock, you know, maybe it becomes a fiend pack warlock, maybe it, it, a little, little crystallized flame yeah. looking thing, or a coal, like coal with like some sparks coming off of it, or something like that. Yeah, it's not, yeah, whatever, something that's interesting. You know, you know, Druid, we don't want to do mistletoe because, you know, everyone will be trying to kiss him. Mm. And yeah, it's just, yeah, it could, could be control. a leaf or a berry or a hummingbird. hummingbird. How about a bird egg? Egg, yeah. Well, I was just thinking like a little humming, crystalline hummingbird or something like that. So, yeah, something right. Well, something yeah. that just represents I, nature. I, I just think it just it should be very like the the player gets to the shape, determine the shape of it. Oh, thing. better yet, would it, like let's merge these ideas, right? It is actually like a clear crystal, but like it's a crystal with something etched inside of it. 
Okay, like one of those things. Like, like, a, yeah, hol- like the, a holograph looking kind of feel. Yeah, to it. and the player could actually choose what that thing is relevant to the to character. Their, character. their uh, type, yeah, yeah. profession. I like that better than it morphing into something. I, yeah, I, th- I think so too. So who made this thing? Where did they come from? Where are they going? I would imagine it had to be created by somebody who was a caster of multiple uh, multiple things. Like It's like, well... I don't want to have to be carrying around 17. Oh, that's true. It makes it super powerful for multi-class casters. Right. Yeah, so, like, maybe it's, like, one of the long-lived races. Like, maybe it was an elf that, like, had, like, three spellcasting classes. Wizard, like, maybe two of them, Wizard like, overlap. Druid cleric? What is it? Wizard, druid, cleric, something like that. Or bard, wizard. Yeah. Sorcerer. Sort of. No, I like I like the idea of doing you know different ones. All, all all you know all three of the mentals. So if you've got I, I'm I'm keen on druid, um, druid uh, sorcerer and and wizard. I think that's a good combo because doesn't bard use their musical instrument? They, no, they could do oratory. They okay. don't have to do that. So and also do, maybe maybe so, for bards it makes noise. Sorcerer like or bard. Or I'm, I'm I'm open to either. It, it both fit fits for an elf, in my opinion. I um, I like bard because I feel like of all the they're more whimsical, more explore, more explore exploration, and uh, so, so they would want to learn. So other Dru- classes druid wizard stuff. bard. Can or do we like that? Druid wizard bard. So is he a hermit? Yeah, druid hermit type of guy. <laughs> Well, yeah, maybe like you know, maybe that was his secret, you know, that he discovered, you know, how to make this thing, and once once he's done, it's you know, it can get reverse engineered, and others can do it. Mm-hmm. But like, so like the first one that was ever made, that's the plus three, the le- you know, the legendary item. And then it's diminishing returns from there. Yeah, everyone else is not quite as good. So we so we've established also to do with like his absolute understanding of magic is what makes it so good and work so well. Like that's why he was able to make this circle one. of the land druid. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, probably, you know, either illusion enchantment or diviner. An he was an enchanter or a diviner. Yeah, and then a bard as well. Mm-hmm. So college of lore, obviously. College of college of lore. He's got expertise in arcana. Wizard transmutationist. Change meter, yeah, yeah. No or enchantment. Illusion. Oh, okay. Because the idea of you know, making enchantments, so right. and, it, and it goes together well with being a bard. Right. But our version of enchanter, where you don't remember you've been charmed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, no. So okay. So but now we should we should probably give it like a power. Right. That's uh. You know, so it's the 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 main one is a plus plus three. It's a universal focus. Yeah, it more it morphs to you know to some extent, but what what else can it do? Yeah. So I guess the idea too is it's not a true ion stone. It just mimics. It mimics that that quality. That, that quality it does, of it does not improve any stats. Well, there's there's ions ones still a lot of there's ones that let you breathe without oxygen. Like, or yeah. yeah, you'll I think live out your natural lifespan or something. Without so it. yeah, like but the the idea is like someone's gonna think it's an ion stone. But it's not actually. It's the stone of the self that created it. Right. Who we should name. We should Ted shouldn't name him. Ted shouldn't. I don't like Ted's elf names. <laughs> I, I, they're too long. Elf names need four syllables. Hmm. That's that's my. It's a rule. For a short elf name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, they, they can't name. all be Kelson on all vile. That's <laughs> yeah. his first name. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that, that's not counting his middle name or his house name. Hmm. <laughs> it's the stone of Eve. Eve. Not to be confused with the Stone of Eve. That is completely different. Mm. Okay, gotcha. All so, right. so what do we want this thing to do? I mean, we don't want to just like regurgitate something that the other ones do. Right. You know, so like we already well, have, re- you know, ca- another casting of a spell. Well, the, if if this guy is this this potent of a caster. And he's going to create this, you know, unique, you know, artifact, legendary item, whatever you want to refer to it as. He's got to imbue it with some kind of thing that is either going to be, you know, of useful or interest to him. So, a druid wizard bard, what kind of, you know, ability would he be seeking to have? I think a really cool ability would be able to cast spells of your casting potential that you couldn't normally learn because you're like, a, you know, say you're a fifth level druid and you've only got third level druid spells, but you're really a 15th level caster. Well, there's like other levels of spells that you would normally have access to as a druid. I mean, not getting rid of your multi-class problem that you have, but maybe selecting one of each of the classes that you are 
that's a higher level than what you actually normally can cast. I think that is way too good. That mm-hmm. is that is quite potent. Especially like for a non um a non um charged item. Right. Mm. You know, a lot of the charge, like, you know, because uh, you look at, like, if you look at Staff of the Magic, Staff of Power, they grant you that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have charges on them. And they, Yeah, and they have charges on them. So I'm looking at, like, this guy is a creator. He, uh, you know, he's a, he, he uh, is a hoarder, well, maybe not a hoarder, but a seeker of knowledge and information. Right, so, what about what about something you know? I, I'm gonna spitball stuff. You know, something dealing with like our arcane sight. Like he can actually see true you know, sight, ma- magical formula, like in item creation. Um, so if he sees a magic item, like he can study it and literally just there you go. There's the formula of how to make it. Oh, uh, so um, yeah, I, I so kind of like that. Is it maybe it gives, gives you advantage to checks to to like figure out the formula of of an arcane item I mean not that the DCs are really made up and set yeah it, there's not a thing for that but like um, you know maybe like you know if you spend X amount of time at, you know so, with the item analyzing a magic item you can write the formula for so, it so here's the thing like so the highest DCs in this game are DC 30 right. in this edition of the game um, so I would almost th- think because you don't want rampant magic items running around your campaign world that like you would want to make um, the Arcana check to figure out the formula would be the highest you can get, a 30. Um, so it giving you an advantage in being a super high level caster and having all these things going for you that like the check to figure out the formula is is a 30. He's got advantage to the role so he figures it out. Because he's got already got expertise, he's going to have a fairly high intelligence and stuff like that. So it gives you a, a much better chance to deduce the, the formula of things. Well, I don't think you can really just blanket say it's a DC 30 because you know you have uh, common, uncommon, rare, very rare, legendary. So I almost feel like, well, it legendary... Should scale, it should scale beyond the 30? Like, no, it's 30 is the end. Yeah, so like to figure out a legendary is a thirty. Well, what what can you, okay? So you can have an intelligence, but it should be super difficult because otherwise, oh, I know formulas. I'm just gonna make magic items and like. But it's not it's the game. Not, you know, it's, well, it's, you still have to have to make them. And like, what does that formula say? Like, are you? It, uh, you could you could definitely go back to AD and D and be like, you got to actually become. It's almost like a quest to make a magic item, not three point five, where I just churn them out. I, yeah, I spend money and, and all of a sudden and money. <laughs> get out magic item no you might have to go to mordor uh scoop out the melted ring and you know take that and uh nice put it on a, a unicorn horn so it's legendary very rare rare uncommon common yes so you know typically things scale by five what if we said you know things scaled by two um so it goes like a, a, tw- a is that 20 to 30 hmm. 20, 22, 24, 26, 20. Yeah, because you're 20, talking 20. about like a 20 to be able to, to learn how to brew a potion. And, and we're not saying, and it's also saying like, uh, and here's the other thing, like maybe you can figure out a formula, you know, once a week or once a month. Mm. It doesn't have to be like at will either. And, and, you know, just because you you have the formula doesn't mean you now have all of the components. Yeah. You know, you still need to get them. And You want to make it the pain in the ass, Dungeon Masters. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's up to each GM to, to, to figure out. Um, you know, there's some, there's some avenues of thought that you literally just say, well, I've got the gold, can I just do this? Whereas other DMs... It's like a uh, magic magic item ATM machine. Mm-hmm. You know, other other uh, other DMs like, really, really prefer the, okay, well, you know, I don't want to make this as prevalent, so... Once an eclipse, right, under a blue moon... Well, I mean, no, not, even that, not even that far, but it's like, all right, well, if you want to do this, you know, you're going to have to go find that one, you know, incredibly rare component to make this thing, and, yeah, you're going to have to convince your adventuring companions to sidetrack their quest, to go into the swamp and, you know, find this, you know, this blue flower that's going to bloom once a month, you know, whatever. Like, you know, I, I like, you know, Crystal Shard... Ages creating Ages Fang, that kind of feel to making a magic item where it felt like he did something. When Brunar created the, the hammer. Yeah, it felt like he did something extraordinary and and very cool. Three point five made it feel like making magic items. It, it made it mundane. It made it's the like magic mundane. Bread. Yeah. And super lame. Uh, very good bread, but I think there there's some bread. advantages to it. Like I, I you know, I, I know you were not, you know, super thrilled with my, you know, my my crazy uh 
crazy caster, um, you know, who, who walked around with his, you know, little ball of lightning. Um, but I, I just thought, you know, it was it was fun to be able to um, actually be able to to do stuff, you know, within the within the scope of the game. It's just up to the GM to figure out what they're going to al allow and what they're not. And but, they can do that just by having the formula be weird. Yes. For things that they don't really want it to be easy to get. You know, I you know I would want it to be like if you if they're gonna craft and forge a magic sword. Like I want it to mean something. I want it to like it should have a name. And you, you don't you don't want someone making just a plus one sword. You want someone making you know Aegis Fang or you know uh, drawing a blank on any other popular name at the moment. Twinkle. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want someone well, to make something you know. Special. Why don't we just not have it do that? I was cool with the plus three the saving throws and attacks. That was what I was cool with. But I didn't need to do anything else. <laughs> If you want to give you some kind of like seeing eye power, then have it be like it's got identify in it or something. Something simple. I don't know. Yeah, we're I getting mean, sidetracked. Well, this magical formula discussion and philosophy on magic items and other things that. No, Ted, we're nerds. We need to argue about this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, no, 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 Nate. Whoever you are, we need to argue about who you are. <laughs> yeah, that no. guy over there with no, the glasses. He, hey, Nate, hey, Ted, you're beard. wearing Nate's face, but. <laughs> uh. All right, so. All right, so there we go. You know, the, the, the lesser versions just wind up being a, you know, uh, a universal focus, um, and it, it, it mutates, but it doesn't give you access to the magical formula. Yes. Yeah, why not? Plus, plus, one, is, uh, plus one to three is pretty good anyway on uh, atta spell attacks and saves. Right. Well, we'll leave it at that, you know. Uh, the you the know, Formula One could be the artifact version. Yeah. Right. Well, th well, that's true. That could be the, the original one. Yeah, that, and, that's uh, that's what I was going for. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we could do that, and and perhaps it gives you the formula for creating a specific magic item. Mm -hmm. So when you when you learn to make like an item like that, it's actually imprinting on your mind to make Aegis Fang like inspiration. Yeah, yeah, like you you it basically it gives you the reverse engineer, but like you in your mind, like you've just analyzed, you just analyzed a magic sword. But that's not the magic sword that you've just un uh, discovered how to make. You you've discovered to make war song that every any time this thing is drawn for battle, it begins to sing a war hymn. You know, as you lay about your enemies, you know. So great, it's not very good for surprise attacks, but <laughs> thematically it's very cool. And, and and perhaps you know magical notes dance across the blade, you know, as if they're being written, you know, as the battle progresses. Right. Uh, yeah, in reality, it's just a plus one song, sword, or, yeah. uh, plus one long sword, or whatever. But you know, you can you, you still like keep the magic in the game and and not turn magic into another form of technology, which right. I hate. Right. So, what do you guys think? Do you do you like this uh, universal focus? Put your thoughts in, in the comments below. While you're doing that, please feel free to click like, share, even subscribe. You can uh, hang out with us over on Facebook. You can check out nerdarchy.com. Also tweet at us on Twitter. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy. For this is a universal focus. Every spellcasting class has got you know some little doodad trinket, something or other that they can use as a focus. Well, what happens if there would be a magic item that could be used by any class? but then beyond that had some other kind of special ability. So first of all, there is precedent for this magic item. Staff of the Magi, Staff of Power, um, what is Hey guys, welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Ted, hanging out with the colleagues today. I'm Nate. I'm Dave. Ryan. And uh, today we're going to bring bring you uh, another Mage Forge, and you know this is where we usually just uh, create a magic item for you to add to your fifth edition game. And my concept, and that bonus is actually going to be a bonus to hit with spells that require to your to your spell attack roll, mm. and it increases the DC by that number by, as well. by that number as well. Right. So right right there, it, it requires attunement. Mm -hmm. And it's already a decent thing because it makes you a more powerful spellcaster, mm -hmm. and you do not have to use your components now. Correct. Does that 
is that just good enough? Like that's that's pretty good because like Rod of the Oath Keeper. What else is? There? Is it Rod of the Oath Keeper? Hmm. Is the the warlock one? Yeah, well, that that yeah that one is, but that one solely can only be used by warlock. No, no, I know the other okay. ones are pretty specific as well. Okay. Right. I'm just pointing out that there's several magic items that are technically arcane focus. that are focused. Focus is, at, yeah, okay. So so there's precedent, and the reason why I bring it up is because uh, that means so so first of all, this this is a magic item can, that can have a plus one to earth ray that do uh, lets you get a spell back okay. once per day. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I don't even think it required, it just so, might require an action. Sounds like equivalent to an arcane recovery in yeah. a way. Yeah. Right. It just gives you an extra but use. But getting a warlock so. you know, spell back is like, oh, look at that. that that's huge. <laughs> and, but, and then if you want to talk, you know, Staff of the Magi or Staff of Power, you're getting a lot of stuff. Right. And they're, they're the three I'm thinking off, off the top of my head. Uh -huh. right. But.